This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So the final part of this chapter is about residence. So an individual will pay certain taxes in the UK based on their residence and their what's known as domicile. So residence is about their presence. Are they present in the UK? Domicile is a bit more complicated. And when we get to inheritance tax, we'll explain that more differently. That's got something a lot more to do with your parentage, where you were born, um, not so much where you live. So your liability to income tax, capital gains and inheritance tax is based upon your residence. If you are UK resident, then you'll pay income tax on your worldwide income. Wherever it is in the, in the world, you'll pay tax on it. If you're non-resident, you only pay UK income tax on your UK income. Um, it is essential, therefore, as it says here, to determine the residence. Now, these rules, in reality, are very, very complicated and very deep. However, you'll be pleased to know that part of the rules are in the rates. Not all of them, but part of them are in the rates, and that does help to a large extent. Um, and the rules that and the uh, the application of those rules within the TX exam are very small. Okay, you won't have to do a great deal. When you move on to advanced tax, you will have to revisit these rules because it will have an impact um, in advanced tax. But for this point, exam, TX, nice and simple. Okay, so I'm going to go through this um, just to give you some illustrations. There are no questions on it because it rarely comes up, but you just need to be aware of, of certain things. Okay, so all of this section here, It's in the rates. So how many days are you in the UK? Were you previously resident? So if you're previously resident and you weren't here for 16 days or less, the automatically not resident. These are automatic, automatic or not automatic. Um, if you were not previously resident and you were here for less than 16 days, then you're automatically not resident. It then mentions ties. That's the bit that's not in the rates. You've got to learn those. You've got to remember what they are. But that is in that little box there. Well, it's not a box. It's got a box with curved corners on it. That's in the rates. So make sure you check it out. OK, now, in order to determine somebody's residence, you have to follow these distinct steps. Step one. Does the individual satisfy any of the automatic overseas tests? And these are individual in the UK for less than 16 days or 46 days and not resident for any of the last three years or 91 days and works full time overseas. If they satisfy any of those three tests which you have to remember now don't panic at this stage because if you look at these look at these numbers there are hints and helps within the rates so to a large extent learning these rules they are important. There are some things in this exam that are more important than important things. And as we go through the course, I will tell you what's very important because it will come up in the exam. What's more important and is likely or probably going to come up. What's important may come up. What's less important is unlikely to come up. Okay. So listen out for that as we go through. So use these rates 
you're obviously going to have to reread this several times. But do they satisfy any of those three tests? If they do, they are automatically not UK resident and therefore only pay income tax on their UK income. OK, if the answer is no, they don't satisfy any of those. You have to do step two. And I've written this out in the manual in <laughs> simple chunks. OK, step two, do they satisfy any of the automatic UK tests are they automatically resident and if they've been here for now it's always done in days you notice it's done in days not months has he or she spent more than 183 days that's technically six months in the UK in the last year if they have they're automatically resident do they have a home here if they have a home here they're classed under tax law as being resident automatically regardless of whether or not because you notice this is ors, not ands. So you buy a home in the UK, you're automatically classed as resident in the UK. So for, um, famous, I was, I was going to give her a name then, but famous musicians, Australian musicians, American musicians, they buy a home in the UK, they're classed as UK resident. They will then pay tax in the UK on their worldwide income. Now, you may say, well, that's not fair, because if they're American and they have a home in America, they pay tax in America. That's true. They will. But the tax laws internationally allow you to offset one set of tax against another. So you don't double tax. You don't pay tax. Um, you get um, credit for the tax you pay in whichever. One country's tax system is more dominant than the other. But you don't need to worry about that. Um, if you work full time in the UK, then again, you are classed as a resident. If the answer is still no, so we can't fulfill any of the overseas tests, we can't fulfill or define any of the UK tests, then you have to move on to step three. The ties. These are the ties that you've got to remember. OK, if they satisfy the ties, and that bearing in mind that what's in the rates, then they're resident. If no, then they're not. These are the ties. And do you remember in here it tells you how many ties you need? Four ties, three ties, two ties, one tie, four ties, three ties, two ties. These are the ties you've got to remember. Do they have a spouse, civil partner or minor child in the UK who lives here? A house in the UK which they use during the year. In the UK for more than 90 days in the previous two tax years. More time in the UK than any other country in the tax year does substantive work. Now, you don't have to determine what substantive work is or more time. It, it will be very obvious in the question one way or the other. Okay, they are more complex, the rules are, as it says there, but you don't have to know them any more than this. And there's three little illustrations here that just give us some idea of the kind of thing that they will ask in the exam. So, Sebastian, not previously resident in the UK, but spent 35 days here in 22-23. He's automatically not resident as he was in the UK for less than 46 days and he was not previously resident. OK. So he's that. OK, is the answer. And that is the rule. Give evidence. OK, give the rule to prove your answer. This that that could be a multiple choice question, section A. You've got some information. He spent 35 days here. Take that. Look at the rates. Look at where it fits in that that table of information. Give your answer. Prove it. OK, illustration number four. Fernando, not previously resident. Now, not previously resident puts them here in this column. So we're only looking at that half. We're only looking at this bit here now. 
because he was not previously resident. Go back to the illustration. But bought a holiday home in May 2022, lived in it for 140 days. The remainder of the year he lived in his home in Spain. Fernando was in the UK too long to be automatically treated as non-resident because he was here for more than 45 days. But not long enough to be treated as automatically resident because he wasn't here for 183 days. He was only here. So this is the information. That's your info. This is the impact and the rules. So using the table, therefore, he's been in the UK for between 121 and 182 days, has only one tie with the UK, he has a home. So as he's not previously resident, he's not treated as UK resident during 22, 23. OK, so this is going to impact his tax position because he's only been in the UK and only pays tax on anything that arises in the year. Um, if he has any at all. Illustration number five. Lewis was in the UK for 80 days. He lived in the only home that he owns. He's been in the UK too long to be treated as automatically not resident. Irrespective of his previous residence, he will therefore be treated as automatically resident because his only home is in the UK. Read the information, check the rates and the table of information, apply it to your question and give your, um, give your answer. Last one. This is the last one of the chapter. Jensen, always been resident, uh, UK resident, spending 10 months of the year in the UK. But in May, he bought an apartment overseas where he lived for most of the tax year, returning to the UK for a further 50 days in 22-23, where he stayed at the family home with his wife and children. He spent more than 15 days in the UK, so will not be automatically not resident, simple as. He will also not be automatically resident because he didn't spend 183 days in the UK, nor does he have his only home in the UK. As he was here between 46 and 90 days, he will remain resident as he has three ties. A spouse and children, a house here, and he was here for more than 90 days in the previous two years. Read the question, apply it to the rates, respond as best you can. Okay, now end of the chapter. So you can, there are practice questions at the end of this manual, right at the end. Um, questions one to four.